Hello everybody, welcome back to Screen Stars and welcome to another PlayStation review. Today I'm taking a look at Dragon's Dogma 2 on the PlayStation 5. Now Dragon's Dogma 2 is the direct sequel to Dragon's Dogma that came out, I think it was about 10 years ago, 2012. It's a game I did play initially, the original Dragon's Dogma, and then I played it a little bit more when the Dark Arisen uh, kind of expansion came out for it. But it isn't a game I completed, but I did very much enjoy the time that I put into the original game. So I have actually been quite excited for this one, uh, for the arrival of Dragon's Dogma 2, and it's been one of my most anticipated games of the year. I love RPGs, and I love well-done RPGs. The question is, is this a well-done RPG? Well, I mean, there is plenty um, of reviews all over YouTube now uh, from channels far more prominent than mine. Um, so there's a lot of evidence out there to suggest that this is a good game um, with some caveats, I suppose. Now, I will say, you know, straight off the bat that I've, I've put about, well, I think about 25 hours into this game now. I'm not far from completing it. I think my understanding is it's a bit, you can kind of get this game completed in about 30 hours, a little bit less. I suspect I'm going to be a little bit more than that because I kind of really enjoy exploring in games like this. Um, and I have thoroughly enjoyed my time so far in this game. Um, I think it's a, a, a wonderful RPG. It's not a perfect RPG, but it is definitely um, a really nicely put together RPG. Now, we will talk a little bit about the controversy of this game, and we'll get it out of the way straight away, and that is... Um, well, I know there's been a lot of issues with the performance of this game on PC... Um, I'm playing this on a PlayStation 5 and I'm happy to report that I have had no issues or problems uh, or anything that is game breaking while I've played this game. Um, a little bit of clipping here and there, uh, but beyond that, no, I've had no crashes or anything to report in regards to problems. So um, I think this is running fine on consoles. There might be others out there that are more uh, of perfectionists than me. I'm quite a tolerant gamer. Uh, but I think it runs absolutely fine on the PlayStation 5, in my opinion. Um, now, the other controversy here is obviously the microtransactions, and I did speak about this in, briefly in my um, first impressions video. Um, after the game was kind of released and a lot of the reviews were out, they kind of dropped these microtransactions, and there's a whole bunch of them, and I think... Bar three of them, I think they're all available to kind of get in game anyway, if you're patient. Um, and it's things like, you know, um, things to kind of help you fast travel, all that kind of stuff. It's, um, yes, this should they have done it. Of course they shouldn't have done it. It's a really stupid thing to do on their part. And it's, it's potentially ruining the reputation of what is an actual fact at the core of this, a very, very good RPG. Um, it was a bad move. Hopefully they will take the decision to kind of um, maybe revert on these microtransactions. And the other controversy as well is the fact that you've just got one game save here, so you can't really start a new game with a new character. Um, which again is naff. You know, you, you, if you want to start again and choose a different character, why, why would you not be able to do that? I mean, you could do that. You're just going to have to go in and kind of delete your save file. But you shouldn't have to do that in this day and age. It's just a really, really stupid thing to do, in my opinion. So that's the controversies out of the way. If any of those things are, like, irritating enough for you not to buy this game, then, you know, you might as well click off now if you like. Um, I'm not of that thinking. I will not spend a penny extra on this game on the microtransactions. And I would suggest nobody else does that because if people buy these things, then they're just going to continue doing it. And clearly people are buying these things. Otherwise, they wouldn't do it. Right, so at the beginning of this game, I mean, if you played the original Dragon's Dogma, you kind of know where this is going. In the original Dra Dragon's Dogma, you were the Arisen. And it is the same here in this game. You are the Arisen. And the Arisen is someone who is... Um, born who can command the pawns and he's also his destiny or her destiny is to kill the big nasty dragon um so it's the same thing in this game as the first game in regards to story now the big difference here in the story is um at the beginning of the game there is like a pretender to the throne um as the arisen you are um 
kind of immediately kind of you put on the throne because you, you you are like the the leader of the kingdom but there is um a fake arisen um on the throne sort of thing so you, that's how you kind of start the game off you're thrown in a prison uh, your memories are taken from you in in the hope that you know these nasty people can get away with being this person pretending to be the arisen so you've got to kind of claim your destiny to that really um and beyond that i'm not going to spoil any of the story only to say that you know the story is serviceable here um but it isn't anything that you kind of go away and think wow that was memorable that's going to win story of the year for me um it's very very serviceable and it's absolutely fine but beyond that it's it's nothing overly special or anything um very similar to the first game um as you are the Arisen, you command the pawns, and if you don't know what that is, the pawns are almost like clones, are really, I suppose. They are like um, humans, but they are kind of removed of any ambition, that kind of stuff. So, you know, they aren't respected at all in society, and you as the Arisen command them. They kind of will follow you everywhere. So when you start the game, you can obviously... There's a character creator, which is quite an in-depth character creator, to be fair. Uh, for you to create your own character and you can go into the game and choose what class you want to be do you want to be a fighter do you want to be an archer rogue mage um, and you can kind of expand on them in the game later on um, uh, once you go into the game and you've done your character you've chosen your, your, your vocation um, very quickly soon after that you are able to then choose one pawn and create a pawn from scratch who will follow you throughout the, the entire game um so that it's you and one pawn that will you know going through the whole game and then you can recruit two more pawns to join you on your way um now yourself and the other pawn that you create you love you both level up um and you can kind of get stronger um using skills and develop the characters and all this kind of stuff and the others in your party the pawns you kind of go into what's called the rift kind of recruit new pawns um so what you have to do as you level up for example if you're like a level 10 and you're going into the rift you it makes sense to kind of try and hire someone who's a a level 10 like you and if you do it won't cost you anything but there is something called uh, rift crystals i believe they call something like that uh, so when you go into the rift depending on how many rift crystals you've got you could potentially um, hire uh, a pawn that might be like level 18 or something so you're level 10 they're level 18 so they're considerably more powerful so they'll be a real asset to you in combat um but eventually you will out uh, level them so then it's then it's time to kind of get some new pawns in sort of thing um so that's how you kind of recruit your pawns um it's up to you what kind of connotation of party you want i generally go with uh, me as a fighter then my the pawn that i create i created a mage and then i usually go with like an archer and another like warrior or fighter or rogue type character so you've got like two fighters and two kind of ranged characters and uh, the mage also acts as support in regards to healing potions and all that kind of stuff another big selling point for this game and it was a real big thing at the time was the fact that you get to fight these huge creatures in this world like giant cyclopses or you know big huge creatures um so you've got to go at these they've got a lot of health and sometimes some of these battles can take a good 10 minutes maybe longer and you've got to go at them and you can climb up them and then you know slash them with the sword you can knock them off balance so that they fall over and that'll give you an advantage and it's it's really cool and it's the best part of the combat for this game the fact that you can kind of you know um go up against these huge huge creatures um, and it is a lot of fun and very very satisfying to kind of um take them down it's it, it's really really enjoyable um sadly th th there's not a great deal of variety in the enemies that you're fighting i don't find uh you know you've got your goblins and different variations of goblins uh you've got like these lizardy creatures you've got humans um and then you've got the giant monsters throughout the game um there's not a huge 
much else to really talk about in regards to enemies. So about 10 hours into the game, maybe a little bit longer, you've kind of seen most of the like enemies that you're going to be facing in the game. Um, the game doesn't kind of come with a difficulty level. You, you know, you can't choose the difficulty level like easy, medium or hard sort of thing. It's just um, it's set at a level and it kind of, you know, you work your way through the game. I think it's pitched just right if you kind of go at the game, you know, using a little bit of your brain power sort of thing, uh, you know, uh, recruit the kind, the right people into your party and don't overexert yourself. There are certain things that you can collect that will kind of bring people back to life because you can kill anybody in this game. Um, but if you kill the wrong person that might kind of break a quest, you can go, you can actually bring them back to life so that you can kind of continue that quest, which is quite a nice thing. So all the NPCs here are kind of killable in the game. Um, there's some like big locations to visit, you know, like towns or cities, if you want to call them that. Um, there's like places to shop so you can get better equipment, better weapons. Uh, better armor, uh, all that kind of stuff. One thing that I do like in this game, um, I like the the exploration, um, the freedom to explore in this game. It, it it really encourages it, and for me, that's probably my favorite part of this game. You know, you're going off on a quest, you're wandering through the map. It's not one of those games that holds your hand and just points you in the right direction um, as to where the next quest is. You know, you've got to kind of find your way by being smart using the map. Um, and you do eventually get there. But it's also fun when you're making your way there to kind of take yourself off the beaten track. And you'll find caves with enemies in there and some really cool loot. Um, and the same again, you know, you're climbing up mountains and you'll find things that, you know, that you'll be able to improve your characters with. And it does genuinely... Um, feel like it's quite rewarding to kind of go off the beaten path and do a little bit of exploring and you never feel like you're being overpowered or not particularly apart from the night um, night time it can get pretty creepy out there because you can barely see uh, anything in front of you um, but you are now able to camp in this game which you didn't have in the first game i don't remember you having it in the first game so you've got like um camping um, gear like uh, modest one or a, a better one um and you can set up camp in certain places on the map and it will allow you to then kind of rest up and do a bit of cooking which is a really cool um video of like real meat being cooked sort of thing but you need to be careful if you haven't got rid of all the enemies in that vicinity, they will attack you at the camp. Um, and it does make the exploration like a little bit, because it kind of breaks it up when you kind of go to camp. And you can kind of rest all morning and then set off on your quest again, the next part of the quest. I really do quite like that feature. So it's, it's exactly what you'd expect from an RPG as well. As I've said, there's, there's really good progression here. You can uh, expand on your vocation as the game changes. So I started as a fighter, and then I can, you can kind of transition into a warrior later, which will allow you to use like big, uh, cumbersome, two-handed broadswords, that kind of thing. Um, really cool. The combat is pretty responsive. You've got like, your light slash and your heavy slash. You've got your dash. Um, you've got your defend with the shield, and then you, you can unlock special moves um, as well as as you go throughout the game. Um, and you kind of spend points that you earn by leveling up to sort of, you know, spend on new special moves. And you can have like four in the slots at once. Um, and then you just explore the map, go for it, kill as many enemies as you can until you get to your next quest. And it's kind of rinse and repeat like that, but it's always kind of fun and enjoyable to play this game. I, I've, I've been super impressed with this game so far. Um, so taking away some of the controversies as, as a game itself, I'm going to rate this one an 8.5 out of 10. I think it's a really, really top notch RPG. Uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed my time with it. And it's a game I will definitely be revisiting um, and doing another playthrough. So thank you very much for joining me, guys.